Our next uh, guest will be coming by way of Skype. Uh, Pastor Michael McBride is joining us. Uh, he is a native of San Francisco and has been active in uh, ministry for over 20 years. In March 2012, he became the National Director for Urban Strategies Live Free campaign for the PICO National Network, a campaign led by hundreds of faith congregations throughout the United States committed to addressing gun violence and mass incarceration of young people of color. I welcome Pastor McBride. Thank you, everyone. Very glad to be here. And uh, I am indeed Michael McBride, an Acosta pastor from the city of Berkeley, the Way Church, where Congresswoman Barbara Lee speaks for me. I also serve as the National Director for the Urban Strategies and Live Free Campaign of the PICO Network, a network which represents over 1 million families in 26 states, 200 cities, with 60 local, state, and national federations. We run the largest voter civic engagement program in the last few elections that has been volunteer-based, and we plan to make over 1 million voter contacts in the next several months leading up to Election Day. We say that the first revolution is always an internal revolution, so we believe it must begin in the hearts and the minds of the Democratic Party. So I want to focus my testimony on how to close the passion gap among low propensity voters using ideas that we call integrated voter engagement to our party who has for too long left behind a racial justice agenda and economic justice mandate that we believe is central to democratic participation. If we are serious about expanding democracy, we must remove every barrier which obstructs the full participation of all of our people in our country from doing so, fully participating. One of the weaknesses we believe in our present party is a robust analysis and governing principle which takes seriously the ways that racial bias and economic inequality is structured through policies and practices which are often championed and sustained by democratic elected officials from the federal level all the way down to our local communities. So voting then must be grounded, we believe, in issues, not candidates, in the people's liberation, not false messiahs, local fights, not national political theater. We have hundreds of thousands of Americans and their families who are caught in a maze of tiered citizenship due to police violence, mass incarceration, economic exploitation, voter disenfranchisement, and arbitrary violence, all of which hinders their full participation of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in our democracy. So three things we believe are necessary for expanding democracy, which the Democratic National uh, platform must have. Number one, ending the profit motive, which drives our addiction to incarceration and fuels our epidemic of gun violence that disenfranchises in some cities one out of every three men of color voters. Florida currently disenfranchises over two million voters because of previous criminal convictions. So can the DNC uh, set a moral standard to end all private prison contracts at the federal level which would decrease the incarceration of black people proportionately, including our immigrant family members, and send a necessary signal to local jails and state prisons about the immorality of such arrangements with private companies that are profiting off of our misery and mistakes. Can the DNC refuse to take dollars from private prison companies, the NRA, gun manufacturers and other for-profit entities which compromise the everyday voters quest for justice and inclusion we believe justice and public safety should not be for sale number two can the dnc support down the ballot races particularly with candidates of color who are champions of the revolution for justice and inclusion rather than establishment candidates of the neoliberal political project which has overseen the greatest expansion of incarceral systems and economic inequality on their watch? Can the DNC uh, prioritize the browning of leadership at the Democratic Party on every level? Can the DNC robustly support building out multi-campaign uh, uh, efforts to build real youthful led progressive wing of the Democratic Party? And then number three, can the DNC nuance its national narrative beyond the presidential race and demand accountability for this platform for local elected officials and bodies, particularly Democratic elected officials, county district attorneys, and sheriffs, 
police unions and school executives who can accelerate the breaking up of the school to prison pipeline, which is another form of voter suppression and exclusion from our democracy. Right now, there is a crisis of confidence with the everyday voter of color, particularly black and brown millennials, because we see local democratic elected officials unable to deliver on broad progressive governing principles like fairness and inclusion. It is a fact that very few, if anyone, in local, state, or even federal offices remember what the platform was from previous electoral cycles. So what does it mean to move this beyond a symbolic document to one of accountability and formation for our mayors, county executives, elected representatives who are part of the Democratic Party, but yet are complicit in excluding our communities from democracy? Many of these Democrats have bought into liberal notions, neoliberal notions of social society, which depend on force and rugged individualism rather than charity and communal interdependence. For our generation, message and ideology matters for our communities. One final caution to the DNC I would offer is any attempt to depend solely on the narrative of Trump as the boogeyman. This will fall flat on many hearts and minds of millennials and low propensity voters who are uh, not able to see the accountability being pushed down the ballot. For many of us, we are worried about our own boogeymen and boogie women who govern cities and counties which incarcerate, over police, gentrify, and exclude our communities from democratic participation. So the DNC platform can emphasize restoring the rights of the formerly incarcerated, addressing the exclusion of black, brown, and poor people from full participation in our society through targeted electoral campaigns as voters and candidates. If we can expand economic dignity and justice, as well as ending the profit motive for policing and incarceration, all the while enforcing a down-the-ballot accountability mechanism for local, state, and national candidates from the Democratic Party, I believe it will close the passion gap with proven strategic engagement, causing more citizens from low propensity populations to vote and sustain the revolution that people started in the fields of Alabama, the roads and freeways of the South, the streets and neighborhoods of Ferguson, and the rural plains of the United States. Thank you for your time. And your Thank you history. very much. Thank you. We will have one question from uh, Dr. West. Yes, my, my dear brother, Pastor McBride, can he, can he hear me? Yes, can, sir. Oh, oh yeah, you. that's good. No, indeed. I, I just want to thank you for your eloquence, and I want to thank you for your witness. Of course, we've marched together. We've gone to jail together. We've also prayed together. Uh, I, I want you to say a bit more about the uh, All of Us Are None uh, movement there on the West Coast that has to do with mass incarceration. Uh, because it seems to me if we look at what you are talking about, your critique of neoliberal capitalism, we actually have a, a way of connecting, based on the moral and spiritual grounds that you best exemplify, connecting all of the different movements, ecological, anti-homophobic, anti-male supremacist, anti-white supremacist, anti-Arab, anti-Jewish, anti-Muslim, and so forth and so on. You've been able to do that on the West Coast. Could you tell us something about that particular movement and the ways in which you've been able to broaden <coughs> it out. We've just heard from our dear brother William Barber, and to have you come right back is quite a double punch for this, this platform committee. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So uh, we have found that if you take seriously integrated voter engagement, organizations and constituencies like all of us or none, a formerly incarcerated, led, built, and run organization allows us to have models we can replicate all across the country by doing five particular things. We can organize a deep base of constituents into year-round power organizations. So we're not just doing one-offs three months, six months before the electoral cycle, but throughout the whole year, we're organizing a deep base of constituents directly impacted people who are able to fight and win local elections, reward and punish elected officials for their inability or their ability to deliver the kind of issues that we care about. Number two, we lead that base to engage, motivate, and mobilize the broader electorate. They then serve as the foot soldiers, if you will, the tip of the spear through voter registration, petition gathering, conversation with voters. We were able to help pass Proposition 30 and Proposition 47 in the state of California, which helped in many ways deconstruct the decades of mass incarceration policy. 
So leading that base to engage. Number three, it then allows us to shift the public narrative. We find again that values-driven moral narratives help develop authentic local spokespeople who move narratives through direct voter engagement, earned and paid media, organizing grass tops, and elite organiz organizing strategies. Uh, number four, it allows us then to lead strategic issue campaigns. So again, we're not just looking towards a figure, we're actually talking about not uh, permanent enemies or permanent allies, but permanent interest and issues, which then again keeps us engaged. And then it allows us to reshape the rules of the game, making sure that our people, our interests are consistently there at the front. These are concrete things that all of us are none. The PICO Network, uh, many of our Black Lives Matter type organizations, the Dream Defenders all across the country, Hands Up United, we are working with this model in mind, and we think that will allow us to close the passion gap to make sure we have people in office that are representing our interests. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.